talking about WOW. And WOW is, uh, if you've downloaded an app recently or you just started with some you know, app you're using at work, WOW is the amount of time it takes you to see the value in that product. Uh, and this is called, uh, this is an important metric in user onboarding. So you know, I want to talk to you about WOW. Um, user onboarding is a deliberate process of taking a complete newbie and making them an expert. And so every product, SaaS company, uh, desktop products, web products, mobile products, have this problem of teaching their users how to get engaged with their product and fall in love with it. Uh, and so how do you do that? Um, so we have a platform that I'll dive into in a second uh, that basically lets these non-technical people, the people who are in charge of growth and adoption, typically your product marketers, product managers, um, engage with their customers in a way that's personalized and targeted and driven by their behaviors. And so, you know, if we take a product like uh, Volkly, for instance, uh, there's a lot going on there. Um, it's a great product, but, you know, right away you may not know exactly what you want to do with that. Um, and it's different for every person. A moderator might have different tools from, you know, an end user or an employee. Uh, how do you teach them all differently? You can go one route, which is hire a huge account management team, spend a lot of money doing that, um, and manually onboard them. They'll drive your costs up, which for SaaS companies is not really ideal. Uh, or you could try to go you know, more downstream and let these people onboard themselves over time uh, and find the thing that's most important to them at the moment. Uh, so let me just grab this. So this is actually the AppQs account for AppQs. Um, and we have these units called flows. So flow, if you're a designer, you think of a workflow. Um, each of these flows, uh, you create an account. And each of them correlate to a different kind of feature or an announcement. Um, some of them are targeted to specific users. <coughs> some of them are targeted to groups of users. Uh, and they're triggered based on things that we know about the person or things that they've done or haven't done. Um, and so for instance, uh, my intern actually today just released this feature to beta users, uh, introducing them to a new analytics file or just some reports that we're showing them. And I can show you what that looks like. So he sent out an email to them saying, you know, log into your account, go to the account page, uh, and you'll have access to this new feature and get a demo of it. So the next time they log into the product, if they're a beta user, um, they get presented with this. Um, and I put together an animated GIF. This literally took him about five minutes to put together. He just grabbed a bunch of screenshots, uh, added a couple arrows in there, I wrote all the copy, all from within the product, but I haven't read any code. Uh, so the problem we solve is for these non-technical people, who, like I said, who are in charge of engagement and adoption, don't have any power to actually do that. Uh, we give them a tool in the, in the sandbox within the product, so web or mobile, um, to be able to create this content and target the people and it makes sense. Um, I thought this was a, a much more technical audience, um, so I don't want to bore you with these tech stack facts. Um, so far this year, we've onboarded about 10,000 of our end users' users. That means 10,000 people who have been onboarded using AppQs. Uh, our total technical costs per month are $11.30. Uh, we're building a super lean business. Uh, that's actually part of our competitive edge. Uh, we process about uh, 60, 60 people per day, um, you know, new people per day. Um, and we currently have zero servers in production. That we manage ourselves. Um, for business stuff, business model stuff, uh, our business principle, the first one is to make something our customers' customers fall in love with. Um, and the second part of that is you know, help everybody be a greater center. And um, you know, the difference between great product companies and poor product companies, the great product companies put themselves in the user's uh, shoes. You know, they think like a customer. Uh, and that's a cultural thing. It's not a thing that a product can solve. And so AppUse is really a vehicle to kind of create that change from somebody who has budget, has authority, and actually cares about this problem uh, from a user perspective, but just might not be thinking about it the right way. Uh, ultimately, product marketers and product managers care about their products and they care about their customers. Uh, we just have to get them to think like that. Uh, thank you. Also, uh, if any of you guys are working on software companies, just have questions about onboarding, uh, or just want like, resources that I can send you, I'm happy to help. Questions?
So is it, is it mainly for websites and works on mobile? And, and how, how does it work? What do they user get? A link to your site or is it a link with the actual application? Yeah, so uh, right now we work from uh, web and iOS only. Um, so the Appcus account is always publishing two Appcus uh, for our customers. I give you some JavaScript snippet for iOS, it's an SDK, uh, and that basically gives you a backdoor into your product. Uh, it's a sandbox environment, so you don't interfere with any of their code, uh, but it's essentially uh, an avenue for you to publish it. That experience from an app is that it looks like it's within the app. Absolutely, that's our, that's our number one thing, right? Especially when you're dealing with onboarding. It is so important uh, to have a great user experience, and that's what we really care about. Uh, so we do everything to make sure performance is awesome uh, and extremely fast. And that's one of the reasons why we went with the architecture that we did. Uh, it's because if you have servers involved, you've got to do a lot of uh, extra work and put in a lot of extra time to make them fast. Uh, and so we found a way to make that very scalable and very quick. Um, I guess, I guess in, a, in a way, um, we let people publish tutorials essentially. That's the main difference. Um, you, if you're talking about like, a, there's a, there are knowledge bases that you see, um, like help software, uh, which kind of put that stuff externally. We try to bring that kind of content into the product uh, and make that timely. So, you know, nobody likes to pull up a help doc, read all of that, go back into the app, try to figure out exactly what it was, and, and do the same process. And a lot of people are trying to do that again with uh, video. And so we try to bring that into the product and do that in tiny little chunks and say like, hey, you just finished some kind of major uh, analytics provider. Uh, we hook into that and also pull out data there. Uh, the idea is to make it as easy as possible for you to identify your customers. Do you have any features to get information from your users, so, so like, like surveys or ratings? I imagine if this for development flows, you might want to get Yeah. Um, that is one of the things we're thinking about. We haven't dug into that yet, just because uh, the main point is to focus people on just creating one awesome user experience. Um, the funny thing about onboarding is there's not a lot of thought leadership around that. Uh, nobody really knows what they're doing. It's all kind of one-off shots in the dark. Um, that's like a lot of overlooked feedback. And we just want to say, like, just get in there and tell them about your last feature and make that awesome. Get them to fall in love with that. something called the uh, Onboarding Academy. You can find it at appcues.com slash academy. Uh, it's a free resource that we publish. Uh, it's all just like content, essentially, and you can go through it and subscribe to the email list. Um, but it's just like, very high impact content about how to do awesome onboarding uh, from start to finish. Uh, there's a bunch of very practical tips as well as some high-level theories that we kind of try to teach people to do. Uh, and this is all stuff that we've uh, done by doing research, uh, building product, working with our customers, doing data across our customer base, and also working with experts in the field. And can you talk a little bit about the no-server architecture? Yeah, sure. Um, this is actually the part I, I really like the most. Um, so uh, we use um, this kind of uh, architecture called no backend, uh, which is basically a completely static app uh, talking directly to a database. Our database of choices, Firebase. Uh, they're awesome. Uh, but essentially, our clients are interacting with JavaScript snippet, and that's it. So they download that, and it talks directly to our database. Um, the average cycle time, or the, the full loop, on that is about 80 milliseconds. Uh, and it actually loads before the initial page, the page loads. Um, for iOS, we have like a handful of fallbacks, and also a lot of caching, so that, that first time user experience is awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's extremely fast. And like I said, so since it's all just static processing uh, or static files, uh, it costs almost nothing. So 30 cents is actually the, our bandwidth costs for um, like static hosting. Cool. Al, thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, come back. Come join New England's largest technology meetup, sponsor an event, present, or attend. 
visit www.bostonnewtech.org.